Be my guest, be my guest, be my guest with Sean Boy Hello, my faithful friends, and welcome back to the Be My Guest podcast with me, your boy, Sean Boy Joe. Now, if you like what I do, and the series has officially kicked off, people, so go and check my previous podcast with Gary Copeland, MBE. If you like that and you like this, smash that subscribe button, give us a cheeky little like on here, and of course, on our Facebook page at Be My Guest with Sean Boy Joe Kids TV icons. You cannot miss it. And in case you do miss it, click that notification bell as well. And quite simply, you won't. You'll be up to date with all of the new content that is uploaded fortnightly with all these brilliant podcasts. Now, on to today's. And today I'm joined by a renowned actor, vocalist and voice artist, who is best known for playing one of the most iconic and recognised puppets in TV history. Yes, I'm talking about a certain lovable goody two-shoes that is the Panda Pooch Sue. And my guest today has had her hand in, or should that be up, the sweet panda's backside for almost 40 years. She may play a national treasure, but to me and so many, she is a national treasure and she's had an extraordinary career on stage and screen. Today, Brenda Longman, be my guest. Hello, Sean. What a wonderful introduction. Um, there was some, there is a slight, um, um, no, I've got to stop there now. It's not quite right that I have had my hand up the panda's backside. I wish I had. Right. I started off, but for um, many years, there have been various people being my body. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely and I, and I can't get down there now because of the arthritis <laughs> right absolutely um you've yeah, there's been so many people that um have have done that job uh, as well as yourself but you have voiced sue now for yeah, so long um so let's let's go back to the very beginning for you because i mean you know we're going to get on to that because there's 40 years of that to get into a podcast incredibly uh, brace yourselves people um so let's start from the very beginning um and i want to talk a little bit about um brenda longman as a little brenda you actually trained as a singer didn't you right. i actually trained as an opera singer um i uh, was trained by a bass who wanted to push my voice down which meant that um, that there were contralto roles um, that were being on offer, but in fact you don't really move into those till you get later on into your life. Right. And I was just too impatient. I wanted to go straight into um, an opera company and play the leads uh, and uh, was offered chorus roles, but in actual fact, um, I thought, well, I'm actually too interested in the spoken word. I don't think I'm cut out to be an opera singer. Mm. So my brother and I, okay, formed a cabaret, folk duo. We went on to Opportunity Knocks, on to Thames Television. Wow. And um, Matthew Corbett happened to be watching that day. And I think that's how uh, Rod, Jane and Freddie started. They went, they went on. Oh, on yes, yeah. Um, so we're kind of roundabout from the same stable. Um, and when you went on Opportunity Knocks in those days, they guaranteed you three Thames television performances. Did they really? Okay. Yeah. So part of that, I went to the Red Grey Theatre because it was my local rep company, and I joined it uh, as a publicity officer and then ended up as a, a, a PA to the artistic director. So I ended up as a sort of assistant. Right. Um, where the uh, confusion is coming in now is that I am still, I am now, the Red Race has been flattened, but I'm now artistic director and I do direct productions in Farnham. But Brilliant. No theatre. Um, yeah, so then um, I met Matthew Corbett, who lived locally, 
we said, oh, I saw you and your brother and you sing and I've seen you and I've attended gigs that you've been to. Come over and have a jam session because you know he was a great musician. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and then we spool on three months. I got Matthew to come and, uh, well, I got Matthew in a giant skin, together with a giant skin, <laughs> uh, give us a clue, a celebrity give us a clue. Oh, yes, yeah. We call my bluff. And I got all sorts of guests. And that was to raise funds for the Red Grave Theatre uh, Trust. Right. And um, that night he came to me and he said, I wonder if you consider auditioning 1981 right. uh, for Sue, the mm. panda, because uh, mum can't. <laughs> Can't read the script, watch a monitor, right. and smoke a fag at the same time. She <laughs> the fire risk in the studio. Right. And, but anyway, but what helped, I, I obviously went, but what helped was, of course, having been on Opportunity Knox quite recently. Um, so that sort of ticked all the boxes for yes. the empty television uh, um, performances. Right. And uh, I mean, my brother and I went on the, uh, the Desercon have a lunchtime show, and then we 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 sort of we did a Benny Hill show. So you know, there were Goodness one or two things that we did. Yeah. Wow, all of these are amazing so that, people. That, yeah. So that's how that that's how it started. And what a what a story that is as well. Um, and you say 1981, um, and you had. You had that relationship, by the sounds of things, with Matthew way before then you started to see. Yeah, I mean, at least, um, I would say, probably a year to 18 months. Right. We, we became really, uh, you know, social, social right. chums, uh, and including my brother, you know, we had, you know, we, we, we had uh, dinner yeah. parties and things together. And, um, yeah, and of course, I met Harry as well. Right. Which was wonderful. Absolutely. And, um, and, of course, worked with him, because on a couple of shows in that first series right. and Harry came and, uh, and was, was part of them. Wonderful. So that was a great joy. Well, it was wonderful because he was part of my childhood. Right, I see, I see. Yes, because of course, you know, um, Sooty had been about long before um, you came onto the scene. And, 1952, um, 1952 yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. It's it's really interesting. Of course, we know how um, how Sooty came about. He was found in in the joke shop in Blackpool, um, right. which which was his home. But it was really fascinating to me to hear the backstory of Harry and his wife Marjorie and how they came to own this little bear in the first place. And it was all, if I'm right in saying, because you know Harry was a great musician, used his hands for the yep. piano, and then. You know, later down the line, he struggled a little bit with his hearing and his wife simply said, well, you must do something with these magical hands that you have. And um, he sort of then took up the idea of magic and that's sort of how, you know, he went to, you know, find Sooty or buy the little bear that actually didn't have a name at the time. It, it was called Teddy, but it was actually bought for um, Peter, who is Matthew, right. Peter Matthew. Yep. Wow. Uh, so it was a it was a gift to, to, to keep him entertained because he was the um, you know right um, uh, in 1947. Right. Um, and uh, he was a baby, so yeah. that that's that's really how it began. It was wow. to entertain Peter. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, from the radio, he was um, Harry was offered some more jobs and said well would you like to do something on the on the small screen and you know and they sort of said well yes this is all rather well but we'd like you to give this bear a little you know characterization and and most importantly give him a name um it was a man called barney colahan who actually produced uh, have a go which used to be a radio right. show um and he and he was the one that was producing the television show right. come on harry I don't know if you know about Harry B. He was an engineer uh, as well. You yes, know, that's right. That was his daytime job. But did you know that he was also a television uh, salesman? Right. And he didn't have a car. And he had to carry, because in those days, television was a great big, heavy thing. Yeah. He had, he had to carry a television. Did you know about this? He carried televisions door to door. Right. And knocked on people's doors saying, 
if you buy this television, you can see me and my little bear. And he'd get out uh -huh. and he became the top television salesman in wow. his area. But it, um, did he not have a television of his own? I remember reading at one point. It was something like £80 back then. Yeah, it, probably not. Probably right. not. Right, well. right. And he was, it was on on a Sunday. Kept, it was always on a Sunday. Yeah. Was when I was younger. Yeah. But it was only on once a fortnight. Right. Yes, and and, and huge. yes, it was absolutely huge by the end of the night. Because I can imagine that um, at that time there was, of course, there was not a lot on, so people had no option no. but to actually watch it. Yeah. Yeah, and that that. And there's a Radio Times. I don't know if, but there's a copy yeah. of the Radio Times. I think it's 1957. Wow. Where Harry and Sooty are endorsing every single advertisement. Right. It's like a Sooty radio sound. And then, of course, he got the OBE. At yeah. The end of the just, thing. just magnificent, just brilliant. How that, how that story it's came about. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And also, um, you were talking about the other jobs that he did. Uh, as you say, the stars align because he took a great leap of faith because obviously you had at the time the BBC weren't paying him an awful lot of money and um, he decided that, you know, his other work was quite demanding and they wouldn't allow him the time off to actually do uh, the BBC work. So he said, well, I'm going to have to just take a leap of faith and just do what I think is right for me. And yeah. that's that's where it all yeah. began for him. Extraordinary, yes, yeah. yes. I mean that you know that it's still going now and um, for generations and generations yes exactly yeah. and um, we mentioned how um, Sooty came about we didn't uh, get to how his name came about uh, you tell us because um, I know and I'm sure some of our listeners know but um, tell us a little bit about you know who gave him the name Sooty well of course the, the, the thing was that on black and white television uh, the little teddy bear that, that Harry bought was all one colour and right. Got the golden colour, but it looked white, right. and so it just needed more definition. And um, it was uh, Marjorie or Toad, as she was affectionately called, which is short for Toby Jug. Oh um, right, <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> um, fantastic. Put, put a hand up the chimney and um, just blacked his ears and yep. blacked his nose, and then and said, "Let's call him Sushi." Yeah, I think her actual words were, "He looks." rather sooty doesn't he yeah. yeah and that was and that and that was it and then and then whenever you tell that story people's faces just light up they just smile and think how simple is that yeah quite really quite, quite simple um something that would never happen nowadays and a real treasured memory that people will look back fondly in history and go that was it there was no fancy um, lights, there was nothing there. It was just simply that. He looked sooty, so we'll call him sooty. Yeah. Just yeah. brilliant. And, and brilliant. as you said, and she, she spent, um, you know, many of those early years sort of portraying Sue when they brought sort of Sue in. And of course, we've got a, um, a very different dynamic um, to the way that Harry portrayed his role with Sooty. He was very much, I am the father, I am the teacher, this is what we're going to do now. You are, you know, he, he adored Sooty, but compared to the way Matthew was, he completely changed the whole dynamic of, of the relationships with Sooty yeah. because he became the 2.4 children in the situation. He was just the big kid that could mess about exactly, with. That's exactly what happened. That, uh, uh, Harry was the father and right. then played the and, and they were the naughty children. Right. But when Maddie came in, he was also one of the children. He right. Was down, he was down with the kids and was more of an idiot than right. them. Right. Right. Um, yeah, not quite. quite. Not quite more of an idiot than Sweet, but certainly <laughs> Sooty was the clever one. And, and Sue was kind of in charge, wasn't she? Yeah. She was the bossy one. And, um, well, and she was the interpretator for them more so. She was, yeah. She, she was the only one that spoke. Yeah. And, Right, okay. Um, so, <laughs> okay. But it was his own brilliant dialogue that he wrote, and it was brilliant, and it was very, very funny. And, um, Absolutely. But then, let's just, just before we move on to the Matthew uh, right. era, a yep. lot of took his success, and not many people speak about this, although it's its simplicity and the lovely routine putting Sooty to bed and 
Absolutely, because as you said, he was an engineer himself, so it yes, really helped with yes, that. Um, right. Absolutely. And then when Matt came in, it became a sitcom. Absolutely, and um, and all these little props that that we saw, so so simple but really effective. Um, you know, with his famous water pistol and all the other sort of with yep. the magic wand, he yep. relied on those to actually. It was very physical the comedy you didn't have to necessarily speak a lot but we just watched him and we saw his craft yes exactly yeah and, absolutely and, and all testimony again to to the working hands that harry had exactly. beautifully yeah. working hands and i and um interestingly we spoke a little bit about you know him playing the piano and how you know he sort of lost his hearing but as you say, the stars aligned again because, you know, uh, uh, many years later, he gradually got his hearing back and was able to then play the piano once more. Yes, indeed. Beautifully, yeah. yeah. And, and, and a, great, a great musician. He, Absolutely. And, uh, and he passed his talents on to both his sons. Yes, they, they right. Musician, as well as Matthew. Right. As well Yes, um, uh, yes, because before um, Matthew was involved with Sooty, we got to see him as one of the original lineups on Rainbow as one of the band members. Yeah, yeah. And so we uh, really Matt, got to see Matt him. Matt and Jerry, or yeah. got, you, you know his show with Jerry Marsden. Right. Uh, there was, uh, I don't know if you remember this, Sean, Matt and Jerry was a, a <laughs> this is Jerry Marsden from Jerry and the Pacemakers. Okay, yes, yeah. a couple of um, tearaway, tearaway lads, both right. of them. Right. And um, yeah, a, a music obviously uh, featured heavily. Absolutely, and um, that relayed into Sooty as well because we saw that we see that Sooty's a wonderful musician who plays the drums and he does lots of different, you know, plays lots of different instruments as well. So that really, you know, you can see the passion that both Harry and Matthew put into their musical talents, and that really relays yeah. into Sooty as well. Yeah. Right. And went to Thames Television. Right. Uh, he was allowed kind of carte blanche, and he had Alan Braden, who was a brilliant um, uh, musical director, mm. and it became very musical then for Harry, and it was his dream. And yeah. he had the Sooty Braden show band. Um, okay. And with a live audience of children. Yeah. And that was before Matthew took it over. Yeah. That was Harry's uh, era at ten. Yeah. And left the BBC. Yeah. So, that that must have been a a big transition for him and a big leap yeah. to go from you know a well established station that you knew you were comfortable with and knew that people were watching to move to Thames Television. What a big leap that was! Well, you know why, don't you? Tell me. Well, it's my fault. Oh, <laughs> oh, um, I see. Yes, um, they introduced Sue the Panda in 1964. Right. And the BBC were criticised for introducing, they said to Sooty's girlfriend, um, for introducing sex into the programme. Oh, wow. And um, so they decided after that, they, they were so criticised um, that they would um, not renew Harry's contract. Oh, OK. And within, I think it was a month, of course, it might even have been... Uh, in fact, there's, there's, there's several stories because somebody said immediately, ITV said, right, come over to us. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't quite immediately. I think it was sort of two to three weeks. Right. They were on to Harry and said, come over here. Right. So that's, that's what actually happened. And it was, it was you know, 
headlines, sex in, so into, you know, sex introduced wow. into the city. Um, it just goes to show, doesn't it, back then, how things are so different. <laughs> They're so ridiculous. Goodness no. gracious yeah. me. And, and also, yeah. you know, to even think about, you know, there are, uh, there's been numbers of occasions where, um, you know, um, you have spoken out as well as Sue herself, you know, stating that, you know, actually, it was never really intended for, for Sue to come in as Sooty's girlfriend. She was just a friend. Yeah, she, yeah exactly. She was just a female yeah. friend. And she and often actually, does say... I think what it was, was I think, right. that Harry wanted to involve his wife. Right, okay. That's it, yeah. yes. And, uh, and it's quite extraordinary because uh, I've watched interviews where Sue has said, well, actually, people seem to think that Sooty is, you know, we are an item, but he hasn't actually asked me out yet. <laughs> So there you go. Um, In fact, there's a there's a, a wonderful um, episode. I can't remember how long ago that was. Where right. She actually goes out with Butch. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant! Um, bri- that's a wow! That's a different ballpark altogether. Yeah, with Butch. Like rough, really. Yeah, exactly. He would. Uh, he would take her out for a nice slap-up meal, I'm sure he would. Um, now, um, we've, we've, moved, we've moved on a little bit because, you know, you spoke about the transition from um, from the BBC to Thames Television and obviously, you know, Harry being still being heavily involved with that and his wife Marjorie. And then obviously, as we mentioned a bit before, you know, um, he was handed down, pardon the pun, um, to, um, Har- to Harry's son. It was handed down to Harry's son. And um, Matthew then sort of took the helms. And as, as we mentioned, he gave the show a complete different dynamic. And you mentioned the fact that it became a sitcom, which is really quite interesting because yeah. I, as a viewer look at something like The Sooty Show and later Sooty and Co. And primarily, you know, of course, we know that it's a, a children's television show. But as a viewer, I've often thought it could really stand alone as perhaps a family sitcom. I could almost envisage, you know, um, you know that type of programme being yeah. sort of before Mr Bean was on on a Saturday evening or something yeah, like that, rather than being on like a, a children's network. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Oh, oh, go, get me going. Now, listen right. here. Um, what it is, is it's all about money. Right. Um, and um, it was a absolutely a family viewing show. Yes. Matthew wrote it on several levels. Yeah. There Gags there that kids didn't get that the parents were laughing Absolutely. at. Absolutely. There were some gags out. that I've only just got at 29 years of age rewatching exactly. them again. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was wonderful. It's right. natural slot should have been on a Sunday when you had family viewing. Absolutely. But you could still have family viewing, um, you know, on a week weekday night. Yeah. But I know there were loads of adults that used to um, watch. Oh, of course. And also... From the very point of fact that you used to have guest artists um, uh, who used to fight to get on it, and Matt would say, to "Yeah," because he'd say, "You know, okay, who do you want on?" And I said, "Oh, because I'm a great alternative comedian, right? Uh, freak in those days." I said, "Oh, can we, you know, can we have um, Harry Hill?" Yeah, have, Harry Hill. You know, um, Paul Merton. Can we have it? And, and they all yeah. were desperate to get on. They were, Absolutely, they were yeah. They were wonderful. Um, Bobby Davro was another one. Yeah, Brilliant, yeah. So, but what happened later on and what has happened later on and what's happened to Paul Richard, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that, right. is that the advertisers need to advertise um, uh, nappy liners, buggies, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you will produce a program that is from age four to seven. Yeah. And that's it. Because our advertisers yeah. need to have those slots. And yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah it but... wasn't, you know, when we started. And so, of course, it became a comedy programme for all ages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the history of going back to the 50s when people were getting older, then they still remembered it. So yeah. it, it sort of gathered momentum, momentum like a snowball. It gathered Absolutely. these old nostalgic viewers and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it got bigger and bigger and bigger. Absolutely. And bigger, really. yeah. it, it's a shame that the age bracket has to be 
it's more niche now than what it was because I watch I watch um, I mean I watched a few years ago the the city that's about now with my cousin who's now 11 a few years back and I thought this is wonderful to see city on the television but it's not what it was when I was a kid no, no. It, um, it, well no and that's of course it's great it's great for it's that brilliant age and people love it because of the nostalgia but but I miss the sitcom clever. feel it to it sophisticated right it was wasn't it I mean the of course were put into an adult adult situation. of course well that was partly because Matthew was the big kid and also the fact that he could break the fourth wall and talk to the yeah. audience, including the yeah. children, as if they yeah. were just adults themselves. Yeah. They were no exactly. different to him. No, quite. Exactly that. Mm. Yeah. 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 We, we had, um, um, <laughs> in certain episodes, I mean, we had Stuart Hall, who was a right. legend in his own lunchtime as a right. director, and um, he used to direct many right um and there were certain things obviously many many times where you know you think i don't think we can say this i'm not going to give you any examples i, I really don't think we can say this. and of course right. we'd all be howling with yes it, but it, it, it got through but then the producer would come rushing down saying no no i'm not having this i'm not having this. <laughs> i can imagine um, that i can imagine that it was it was hilarious um we had the best time, particularly on location. Yeah. Um, I used to have to take a fortnight off afterwards because I was exhausted and not through doing the work, even though they were long days. Right. Because I'd laughed so much. Yes, I can I imagine. Laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And, and all that crew, um, uh, in fact, used to fight to try and get onto the shoot because they right. knew what, what, what a yeah, have. absolutely, and and that again, and I've said this in nearly every podcast that I've done. That comes down to Matthew and the fact that he is just quite yeah. simply a genius. I will, well, he is, I yeah. will say, and, he, and when you consider, yeah, he, when you consider, he puppeteered. I mean, he puppeteered. Yeah, he wrote all of the scripts. Yeah, he wrote all of the yeah. songs. Yeah, I mean, um, and of course, when it came to sold on. Um, everybody jumped at trying to sell it. It was the top children's television program. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't realise they were buying a piece of fur fabric. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned about some of the stars that you had on there. Surprisingly, it also helps that about some of the stars you had were on a sort of higher level. They were sort of prime time entertainment stars that the adults sort of knew. I oh, know. I, I mean, certainly. Spike, Spike Milligan was one. Yeah. I particularly remember we went up didn't <laughs> it was terrible really because right. it must have cost a lot of money we went we were filming outside um, television studios and, and spike just wasn't in the mood that day right. he, he just kept messing about <laughs> he lost the whole day soon oh dear but we had such a wonderful time what a memory um, yeah yeah uh, and i can remember wheeling him down and displaying this old man in, in a wheelchair with a blanket over him and right out at people, but we obviously had to do it very quickly the next yeah. day, so he had to come back and do it the next day. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, one, just wonderful people. One of the things... The other thing is, just, yeah. just doing a bit of self-promotion here, Right. I, I played the part of Mo from the market you did. in the 90s. Yeah. And also, Mo had some great lines as well, and you, and you mentioned Mo there... Mo had some fantastic Yeah, stories. Mo and from market. Mo, yeah. He loved he loved Vera Duckworth in Coronation. Right. Obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're, you're probably too young to remember. I do and, remember, and yeah. That, that's who he based her, her on. Right. And then I, I had um, this Dawn who played the, the actress who played it. I had all her cast off wigs. Oh, wow. And this, in the Granada makeup studio. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be going out one door right. and coming in the other. And nobody quite knew. Right. Um, you know, from behind. Yeah. Probably looked identical because of the same height. But uh, yeah, he. he Loved Brilliant. Because again, she was somebody who got got won over on it. Yeah, a very adult type character yeah, for a children's show. She was a con woman. Yes. <laughs> and and she would always come in with the same catchphrase, which was. Who are you? Only me, but I'm from Market. There we go. Well, there was um, actually somebody later on wanted to write a wanted to write a a um, a, um, a series for both. Oh, wouldn't that have been fabulous? As a guest, but it, it didn't. It didn't. 
Yeah, that would have been shame, fabulous. Really. I think what would have been lovely is to see more of yourself and Connie because when we got to see you two together, that was that was That's Matthew true. thinking back to Coronation Street again because we, it, it was yeah. brilliant. There was a fabulous episode, I think, when the, uh, Mo was standing for counsellor. Absolutely. So was, so was Connie. Do you remember that? Absolutely, and they were so just bickering boring. the whole day, um, which has been because you don't see that. Uh, he was he was careful. He knew his territory but also he wasn't shy to sort of be edgy at the same time as well as it being very as well as being very careful and mindful that it still is a children's program exactly and it was good to have connie on there as well yeah. because um on the stage show matt matt used to do uh the six months leading up to christmas or right. five months or whatever it was right. and then connie would take over his role and he'd have another presenter, but all the kids would know Connie from yes, of course. the telly suit, so it was a good move on his part. Yeah, it, it was um, wonderful, and, and it was lovely to see that, um, because I always thought, well, Connie was brought in as somebody that was maybe, you know, established as somebody, just a, a, some, a performer, but, but she was brought in, and she's really very much known for her role in Sooty & Co., very much so. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, was brought exactly. in specifically for that. No, no, she was one of the uh, stage presenters. Right. And, um, okay. She, she ran, uh, oh, she was so wonderful. She ran uh, the entertainments at Southport right. um, for many, many years. Right. And, um, and she was a wonderful artist. Right. She actually um, went on, uh, when she wasn't doing so, she was on cruise ships um, ah. taking art, art classes. Brilliant. Um, and uh, and she she didn't ever have any children, right. but um, she gave her life to children. She got an MBE absolutely. Um, for all her services to children's charities. Yeah, and things. absolutely. Um, uh, and uh, well, she just she felt was, like everybody's auntie, not just sooty yeah, and sweets. Yeah, yeah. She was she was absolutely lovely, and um, she was taken too soon. She was yes. Yeah, um, as a lot of um, a lot of um, my our guests were. I mean, we spoke about um, you know Rod Jane and Freddie, of course, recently. You know, saying oh, goodbye. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. and uh, yeah. So that you just um, all these fond memories make it all worth the while that we're keeping uh, the memories alive there. Um, because and Freddie actually. Um, right. Another connection is that when when Matt retired. Yeah. Um, and they were looking for people to write episodes. Suddenly, you're thinking, oh my God, we've got to write all these episodes. Right. And, and Freddie actually wrote a, a couple of Sooty uh, episodes. Oh, lovely. Brilliant. Yeah, bless him. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, wonderful. So, um, let's let's move swiftly on so we can get through all of Sooty and then move on to what's happening now as well. Um, yeah. So, um, we're, we're going on to um, Sooty and... Co and obviously Sooty celebrates, you know, in 1998 a big milestone, 50 years. And uh, back then, when he was, it was really celebrated. It wasn't just a birthday. I mean, they, I mean, the whole of Children's ITV dedicated, you know, a whole sort of week to Sooty, which was incredible. You had the likes of Neil Buchanan on Art Attack, sort of making Sooty little puppets and that sort of thing. And 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 the whole of the, the week was dedicated to him, and obviously you had the documentary there. Um, and, of course, by that point, um, Matthew, uh, a few years prior, had done a, an evening with quite extraordinary. I bet that must have been a real privilege to be able to, you know, play Sue on a good evening with. Yeah, yeah, an audience with, yeah. An audience with, that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, I, oh, yes, it was extraordinary, yeah. It was quite, quite surreal, because you had the parents of the children as well and uh, yeah we had jonathan ross yeah uh, and because it was parents and, and the kids and um, oh lovely linda bellingham who actually had been at drama school with matt oh brilliant get matt trained as an actor yes at school. so there were quite quite a lot of his mates who got yeah. to be barely very successful but yeah it was it was lovely it yeah was absolutely lovely it must have been quite strange sort of you're now entering into mainstream television you know rather than sort of being on it on a kids show yes quite yeah, yeah. and you've managed to do that quite a lot of times with the likes of sue and and the character because she appeared on the weakest link and you know you yourself have appeared on lots of programs as well you're sort of entering that territory is it quite peculiar that you have to talk to 
you know, because we're all used to, we know that Sue has a fixed age of, you know, six, I think, isn't it? Five, right, okay. So when you're sort of talking to someone like Anne Robinson and you're talking to a, an adult, you have to sort of answer adult questions. Is it quite yeah. peculiar to sit there and think, well, do I just answer what Sue would know as a six-year-old or do I have to put my Brenda Longman well, head on? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, hmm. he, yeah, and Basil has got that problem as exactly, well. Exactly, yes. Um, except, I don't think Basil's age is ever mentioned because he's now doing a, a, an adult show. Yeah. Um, that's all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I know, I, yeah. I answer is me, I'm afraid. Right. I'm afraid I answer is me when I'm on, a, when I'm on a, an ordinary programme. Right. But I'm still with a kind of suit. Of course you do the suit. voice. don't forget, right. she was, Matthew at six, had her stripping down motorbikes, doing an open university course, <laughs> anyway. So it's just that she's a bit of a precocious panda. Oh, of course. She, she's that's very that's intelligent. Cool. And, we, and we're coming on to to talk about, you know, the progression of Sue. Um, and, you know, as we said, Matthew, uh, 1998 came, and it felt like, I remember when he retired, it was almost like, um, looking back at it now, uh, what really resonated with me is when um, Dame Judy Dench had finished with Geoffrey Palmer doing his time goes by, the ad in the paper the very next day on the Sun newspaper was a little bit of England has died, which she explained was a little bit over the top, but she understood because they had been in people's homes for so many years. It felt a little bit like that when Matthew shut up shop. It was very bittersweet. And also for a children's program, for, for him to say, I am leaving now, which you don't often get. It's it, normally it's a recast or whatever, but it's you you but don't get that. No, and I I, I let you into a, a, a sort of personal secret. Right. Um, uh, uh, after. Three Let's years hope nobody's that, listening. <laughs> it was just three years before that. Matt said, I, I'm, "I'm giving this up when I when I hit 50. Oh wow! And, and I said, "Oh, don't get ridiculous." He said, "Yes, I, I I'm going to I'm going to stop." He said, wow. "Sally wants." Wow. I never, ever, um, I have to write everything down um, in a diary. Every day is accounted for. It's a bit like the Queen. I never stop working. And yeah. it's absolutely the truth. Yeah, um, I can imagine. Like, um, like they're going to burn out with writing the Goon Show. Because to write that amount, anyway, he said, we have to book in our holidays. He said, I even nearly had to come back from holiday for my own father's funeral because oh. I just isn't the time. Right. And they couldn't get in touch with him, actually, when Harry died. It was quite difficult. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Sally said, no, time is to stop now. You've got to stop. You've got to stop. Yeah. And um, I thought, yeah, yeah, well, that won't happen. And then the next year he said, no, in two years' time, I'm like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. And I couldn't believe it when it happened. No. I couldn't take it in because... I knew how much he loved it. I knew how much Absolutely. Um, it meant to him. And to go from every second of every day yeah. it to nothing right. was weird. I could and imagine I it would have been. And I with him afterwards, uh, you know, he'd be up saying, come on, brother, come, have a listen to these songs that I've written. And he, you know, they weren't good. Right. I didn't say that on the podcast. Um, no, but I can understand your reasoning for it, yeah. Yes. Because he's still got, I mean, 50 is nothing. Of course, this, of course. Um, but, you know, there we are. I, I just, you know, they, they, he, he then went on to do, to build a, you know, because he's sort of renaissance man, he went on to design and build his own long boat, uh, long boat, narrow boat. Yeah. Um, and all of that. So I remember watching that programme where he did that, yeah. You know, it, it would have been. Um, satisfied in other in other ways. And yeah. I just think, um, but, but but perhaps Sally had had enough, you know. Right. It was quite difficult. I mean, yeah, I can imagine it would have been. But um, yeah. but that that I mean, you know, one door closes, another one opens, and of course, you know, we have yeah. the lovely and Richard she, Cadell. And she of course said, I don't want the same thing to happen to you as your father, and she's dead right about right. that. Yes, you know. exactly. And and it's better. You know, to say, um, oh yes, um, I remember Matthew Corbett, rather than going, oh Matthew Corbett is he's still doing that 
sooty, you know, thing. Uh, um, yeah, 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 even wanting more. It's absolutely yeah. wonderful, and he couldn't have left him in more capable hands because, you know, it was almost like, well, I, I use the pun, you know, a hand in a glove. Yes, Richard really fell into it instantly. Um, oh, he did, yes. And just, I mean, he yeah. physically looked like, because a lot of people at that time thought Richard was Matt's son. Right, they? yeah, or, absolutely. Or Right. Um, because they had lovely Liana Bridges and, and Oh yes, I remember Liana, yes. Richard were meant to be joint um, uh, presenters. Right. And they were told or Liana was told, you know, they were equal. Right. Um, and Richard was told something else. Yeah. It, it was very difficult for them and of course they elbowed poor Liana. Yes, I remember I, I, I read something where they just told her on the phone that no longer she was needed. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, and we um, um, we're coming on to very sort of badly handled. it was yes, and we we're coming on to that sort of period of sooty. Of course, we're not going to mention who are involved with that, um, yeah. although the company is no longer um, you know around. Um, no. But um, um, the sooty show going into a different direction. Of course, we've got sooty heights, which which we can yeah. sort of eliminate yeah. and say that yeah. was a beautifully crafted series because it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we saw you again play Sue, and then we were introduced again to some of the older characters like Ramsbottom, Butch, um, and that was a, a great success. But then, sort of, there was a period where it sort of didn't really um, work for Sooty. They wanted to change and maybe, in a way, modernise Sooty and make him into something that perhaps audiences weren't used to. Um, I think. You were. Um, uh, I can't remember what year that was. Um, 2001, uh, they, I think it says here in my notes. Yeah, 2001. right. Um, yeah. Sadly. Naughty, uh, yep. And uh, um, <laughs> I've still got the notes that it is with deep regret. Um, anyway, right. um, that was that. Um, and, yeah. Um, but I think, didn't they make two series in one year? Uh, I think, or they showed it. Right. So that's how that kept it going. But the thing was being, I, and I don't know because I didn't take any notes, the thing was being sold and sold and sold and sold, right. wasn't it? Yeah. And it was gradually being eroded. Right. And every, each time they did a bit, it just got worse and worse. And the city was actually disappearing, the original format. Absolutely. I mean, to physically look at him, he it, like he'd lost so much weight. He was under stress as well by the looks of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Which was um, it was it was Richard sad. And I but... were still having conversations. Yeah. And because Richard, um, as as a as wonderful entrepreneur, right? He is, of course, yeah. He knows, you know, with the sea pops and everything. Yeah. Started a company called Duo Pantos. Right. And and, and, and he produced Pantos. Right. Right. And I played the Wicked Queen for him. Okay. And, and, and so, I, you know, I was still with him. Yeah. Even though sort oh, of, of wasn't course. A part, part of it. Of course. And, and, it, and it was, he's made it very clear that he wasn't happy at the fact that you weren't involved with that. And also, he wasn't happy at the way that it was going and also the way they wanted to turn the character of Sue into this rather stroppy teenager. And that's not who she was. She was the no. peacemaker with Sooty. It didn't help, um, and this is, you know, I mean, Sheila Clark is a wonderful puppeteer, but um, yeah. it, it didn't help that the fact that her voice was very graspy rather than gentle and soft like we all know that sue is um exactly. so it abs <laughs> abs has a lot of colors yeah so, absolutely okay. absolutely but, um, what was telling was during that period mcdonald um wanted sue to voice a, a, a promotion campaign for their i think they had a i can't remember what it was called now but it was a lucky box had a burger and a milk drink and oh the happy meal yes yeah. Right. Of course it was. Of course yeah. It was. Yeah. And um, you get the little wanted, toy inside the Happy Meal. Yeah. They wanted Sue to voice the campaign because they said, uh, you know, children associate with that voice. And right. They trust it. Mums trust it. Um, you know. Sue is in you. They wanted you to campaign it. Yeah. Right. So, Brilliant. Uh, she, 
she well, that's testimony. Doing it and, and they, they went, you know, to... to, to that's uh, testimony the to you, then. ...company and said, we want Sue. And I don't know what happened, but right. they said, well, that's not Sue. Who, you know, and then they found out it was me, of course, they went to my agent, and, and of course... So I was still voicing Sue... In Absolutely. ...in the that Sheila Clark was doing it. Absolutely. Right. Uh, we'll just so we'll just say that was like Sue's it. sister, shall we? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. um, yeah. the personality was very different, um, you know, very very much so. And also the physicality and the look of Sue. I mean, it almost looked like she was turning into this sort of gothic character. Her eyes were very black, and she wore this headband. And and I think yeah, that just goes to show Richard's determination because. What he decided to do is he just had enough and thought, well, you know what, this is not how Harry would have wanted it. And he went back and he watched all of those and still does watch all of those original episodes and thought, yeah. we need to bring things back down to earth here and take a grip of things. And then he decided that he was going to own everything and thank God for that because the first thing that he did was say, Brenda, welcome back. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, what was so exciting was we were doing Panto together. He was playing right. Bubbles and I was... We were doing Panto together when he put the offer in to buy it. Right. So I was there with him, right. with bated breath, waiting right. to hear whether the offer had been accepted. And okay. actually with him that Christmas. It was Christmas. Right. And, um, and we... Uh, uh, and, yes, the call came through and he just came and said, we've got it. Good. And you had a little um, bridge in between that where you were able to branch out into do lots of other things. And also, you know, as well as still being able to play Sue, as you said, you appeared on The Weakest Link, which was fascinating to me because um, I often I often sit there and think if I was in the audience, I would be facing your back. So all I would be able to see is, you know, maybe yourself and the puppet. Oh, my God, they hadn't thought The Weakest Link through. They no way. Right. Okay. And how many tape stops they were going to have to do. <laughs> um, and it took hours and hours. Yeah. That poor audience were there forever. I often and wondered why they were so quiet when they were clapping, thinking, oh, we've been here for ages now. Oh, yeah. gosh. And, and some of them, you know, they were all dying to go to the loons. Yeah, like yeah. It was, it was horrendous right. for me, personally. Right. And I'll tell you why. Right. Yeah, yeah. We started off marvellously, but as people uh, went off, uh, they went home because they've been there for hours and hours. Yeah, right. I won it. You did. And I'll tell you another little story about that in a minute. Go on then, right. Um, Let's hope nobody's I, I, listening oh, again. <laughs> that back with interest um brilliant i i shall so th there's a lesson for anybody who's currently wanting to appear on the weakest link do not win it's not all that it made out to be um <laughs> well, if, you're a puppet, if you're a puppet of course yes if you're a puppet, if you're a puppet yes how was it uh, meeting uh, or coming face to face how how was it for sue meeting the formidable anne robinson Right. But um, in a break, I actually happened, Brenda Longman happened in 
to her um, dressing room, wandered oh. into this area, which was her sort of dressing area, yeah. uh, by mistake. Right. Uh, so I had a personal confrontation with her. Oh dear. Um, but um, what made me laugh was yeah. <laughs> I walked down the corridor right. of Elm Street. There were loads of photographs of Anne with various celebrities. Yeah. Um, Yes, I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> exactly, at different stages of her career. I mean, what a conundrum that must have been. Ah, uh, there we go. That's a little joke for the Countdown but, fans there. But, but what, what she did when she came out uh, at the beginning. Right. You know, she went, um, what's that called? Um, All right, ladies, come on. Come and have a look and see. What, I know you're all dying to come down. And say, That's exactly brilliant. My latest. Come on, come on now, form an orderly queue. <laughs> oh dear. You've appeared on so many other shows as yourself. You know, you appeared on Bargain Hunt and you've appeared on yeah. Pointless. Yeah. There, uh, did you have a better experience on those shows? Um, oh, I loved Bargain Hunt because right. um, I was with my chums and we were doing it for yeah. the theatre company. Right. The Farnham Rep. Right, um, yep. And that was divine. Um, uh, yeah, I loved that. That was that was that was great fun, and um, yeah. uh, I'd love to, to go back and do it, do it as well. Yeah. Without the puppets, but yes. It oh, was you did good. that with the puppets as well, right? Yeah, we did it with the puppets. Yeah, because we we um, fortunately, my friend um, who was my partner on that, Robert Gray, right, that, was also an antique dealer as well. Okay. And um, uh, and he found this little stone, um, Welsh stone. Yeah. Piece. Right. Uh, I think we got it for 15 quid. Wow. And, um, it was a test piece. Yeah. Somebody uh, that they made before yeah. they made them do the real thing. And, and, and that went for well, well, in excess of 100 quid. Goodness so me. I would never have known that. No, right, exactly. So we're coming on to uh, sort of more so the present day, and obviously Sooty is still on the television. Is this current series, or the series that, that um, was, that started back in 2011, all those years ago, wow. Um, and we produced, you produced, um, and Richard produced three series of that initially for ITV, now on Little B, which again, in a way, sort of gives it a more niche market. Well, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and you know, obviously... Because it was never initially shown as a preschool show. Whenever yeah. I watched it on children's ITV, it would always be in the later part of the, of the schedule. That's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And um, uh, um, people come up to me, you know, and say, didn't you used to be the voice of Sue? And I, no, no, I didn't used to be. I still am. It's exactly. And, and, and um, oh, is it, oh, well, I'd love to show it to my children. And I thought, well, you know, some kids find it, don't they? They, yeah. they, they automatically find it. I mean, that's what Richard said to me. Oh, they, they'll find it if they want it. Yeah. You know? mm. um, but it's, it, mm, yeah. Not as commercially out there as it's a... Uh, it is. No. no, but but at the same time, I think that's that comes down to all all manner of programs. But the fact that he still is yeah. out there is 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 miraculous because I remember Matthew saying something about um, children's programming and saying that you have a lot of characters that peak, they go up and down, up and down. But Sooty has always just stayed on one level throughout yeah. his career, yeah. which is yeah. which is amazing. You know, um, and he's never really faded out, and, and hopefully he never will. But um, yeah, and the one thing about this series is that you're able to have, you know, again in most episodes some really big named stars, and we're talking about, you know, from from singers to reality stars. I mean, you had Amy Child in one episode, and then on yeah. another you had Stacey Solomon, and of course yeah. you also got to work with the fabulous, the late great John Chalice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew John before. Right. Uh, I'm sure you did, yeah. Work together, but right. uh, yes, yeah, bless his heart. Right. Yes. Um, that, that that was great, and, and that was a smashing episode. Yeah. My uh, my the person who I love working with, and, and um, I'm hoping if, if the movie ever gets off the ground, it's oh yes, on the back boiler, man, is is Graham Fellows who plays John Shuttleworth on the uh, radio. Yeah. You, you know who I mean, do you? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, well, I think I mean, so. He's, he's hilarious. There's, there's a, a Radio 4 programme called The Shuttleworth, but he, is, right. he was um, Gordon is a moron with uh, a big hit. Um, I see. Uh, 
I shall go great, back and I shall listen to that in interest. He's got, he's got this in, incredible uh, uh, other persona. He dresses as if he's his dad in the 70s, basically. Right. And right. he's a northerner. And, right. Um, uh, he's one of my heroes because he makes me laugh and laugh and laugh. He even Fabulous. calls all the voices. This is his wife. He's his agent next door. It's, it's a whole thing, but it's all him. Yeah. Um, and he has dripped in uh, on a couple of those episodes. Uh, right. So yeah. And, uh, so, and I think he was going to be in the movie. He was definitely going to be in the movie. Well, well let's so hope so. Absolutely. Um, talk to me. I want to. He appeared with us on this morning. That was the other. There thing. you go. So, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. And yeah, you've appeared many times on that show. Um, talk to me about uh, one of the. Well, I say you can look back and laugh now, but at the moment that Sooty got into a little bit of trouble because accidentally he managed to hit Paul Daniels, the late Paul Daniels. Oh, yeah. oh, I remember the headline on that. I thought that's that's quite something when you've made the front page of the Sun newspaper. God rest him, yeah. It was an episode where the boys started a, a pizza delivery. Right. And as these things happen, it takes quite a long time to um, uh, film uh, uh, these shots. Yeah. And the pizzas have to sort of land in the exactly right. right place. But obviously, during the day, and with uh, exposure to the air and everything, the pizzas have got harder and harder. Right. And so um, they were, you know, um, really quite dangerous. Right. And um, and this one hit poor Paul in the eye. Uh. Um, and uh, uh, he gallantly carried on. That was fine. And yeah. Everything. And then afterwards, we could see that he was really hurt. Uh, and right. Debbie said because Debbie was there. She said, yeah. oh, I think, you know, poor poor Paul. Is, oh my God. And I said, you. Uh, and uh, I said, actually, it wasn't me. I said, get him to hospital. Get him to hospital. Yeah. Got to do it now. some stories here today aren't we yeah. um but and i said that on this morning exactly um, right uh, uh, i actually said that to prince who thought it was going shush sure, shush sure, sure. and i said well no it's, it's true right exactly yes yeah and i you know i'm sure paul and debbie would admit it of course and they're probably laughing it now you know looking back at it oh, yeah. yeah i mean the fact that they got to to work with sooty was you know well, one thing in itself um so you well, know yeah Right, I see. And of course, he and Debbie work together in Pantomime right now. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant, yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, so let's hope that uh, maybe, you know, at some point in the near future that we, that we maybe get that sort of sitcom style sooty back, sort of yeah. mainstream somewhere. Yeah. And maybe, let's just, you know, maybe um, the theme park that is just about to open in May at Creeley in Devon, maybe that will help with that because there might you never know even be a sooty and co shop on site yes yeah exactly yeah that so would be good wouldn't it It would be lovely to and actually uh, go to a replica and, and of the sooty and co shop be running one of, the donut stores. of course she could you know, you know richard is, is president of the showman's guild okay you know that? right and the showman's guild uh are circuses and yeah art. Yeah, yeah. So he, and he owns, a, he owns a ghost train that travels around the right. He owns all sorts of fairground rides. Right. So because of that connection and that interest, uh, he was looking for um, sponsorship for the film, and I understand that perhaps it's the same guy that was going to, or is going to be one of the producers on the film, and they must have got into a conversation about right. it. Right. Uh, the fact that we. Uh, he and his brother sold the Breen theme 
right. park, which was a great location to make the film, because you don't have to pay yeah. hundreds of thousands of pounds for location yeah. fees, which means you could make a series and present it to ITV right. for, you know, yeah. uh, less money. Uh, and, of course, he obviously um, had this idea, well, we, I can remember talking to him about it years and years ago, and saying, well, you, there ought to be a, you know, a city, city land, city world, there ought to be yeah. something where, you know, everything is, is related to yeah. the city. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's always been in the back of his mind. So obviously he had uh, floated this idea, and of course it's a brilliant idea for, for both of them, because it's going to, um, you know, um, boost the creamy theme part, right. and give it, give it a focus, and uh, because it's on the television, because it's a show that's drawing, because it's got the, this incredible brand, um, it's going to be good for both of them, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I think that's how it sort of came about. Absolutely, and it'll bring a lot of attraction from people yeah. up and down the country, which is great, and it's already got yeah. a great buzz to it. And uh, if you want to know more yeah, about I'm that... talking to the Daily Telegraph tomorrow about it. I've got an Brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. So that, that uh, let's hope that really takes off. And uh, if you want to see more about that, uh, Sooty has a brand new episode that you can see on Sooty Plus. There we go on the YouTube channel, um, where he is going to be opening uh, his very first theme park. See what happens there. Lots of scrapes and mishaps as always. Uh, great family fun there. Brilliant episode to see as well. Um, and slightly longer than the the uh, originals. Right, so let's um, move on swiftly um, to talk about uh, what you are doing today because of course, you know, Sue is one thing, but you're a very established and well-trained actress, a beautiful actress, I must say, who um, has appeared in so many theatre productions and at the moment yeah. you are appearing in The Mousetrap. You've just, just finished it. Finished that, Sean. Yeah, yeah. I just finished but I just had a wonderful time. Right. We were the first show back after lockdown, which was amazing. Wow. Really. But what was so weird was being the only show. It seemed like the only show on in the West. Yes, after right. Um, but it, I just had I had such a wonderful time there. Yeah. And uh, it was a great family. And the fact that we could go back because there yeah. were only eight characters in the play. Right. And uh, each character's got their own separate dressing room, so, yeah. you know, it's not like doing a musical. No, right. Band in the same but what was amazing was the fact that Sooty started in 1952, the Mousetrap started in oh, 1952. Wow. This is the Queen's Jubilee year, yeah. uh, 1952, um, and so I'm in a kind of 1952 uh, time war. Yeah. Uh, I just want to um, get a part in the Archers now, really, because <laughs> I think I've got seen that one though, but that right. would be the hat trick. There that you would go. Be the hat trick for me. But no, I've done lots of musicals, done Rebel Mother and the Sound of Music many, many times. Right. It's been a, a big part of my life. Right. Music. Um, and I had a work for a wonderful man called Ronnie Lee, who was a musicals producer in America, right. who let me go to record Sooty when in the middle of doing. Uh, a run because I would get offered like Les Miserables yeah. uh, I was offered the original cast and of course I knew that right in the middle of it I'd yeah. have to take two months three months out to do 30 yeah. and um, uh, and, I, and I had to turn stuff down I had right. no idea it was going to be as big as that and I lost my first agent because of it because I oh I see it. yeah I, and they said you know what do you mean you're going off to be a voice for stuff like you know they've offered yeah. And I, and I, I, they would now have to eat their words because, uh, what is it, 40, Absolutely. 41 years later. Oh, yeah, exactly. Still a job. Exactly. You know, and amazing. It, so that, of that's course. Absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, um, I've got an exciting, I'm, I'm not actually going to say anything about that, but I uh, right. may have an exciting job coming up at the end of the year. Uh, they always say that. We can't tell you anymore. Yeah, they always I say that. I can't. No, I know. I Yeah. Venues to put on and employing other actors. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also chairman of the local village hall committee. 
there you go. Well, oh, there you go. Highlight of your career there. <laughs> Brilliant. There we go. Chairman of the City Hall. Must I always wondered, I always love the little communities they have in those little village halls, you know, going to do yeah. their bake sales yeah. and it's charity runs. Right. <laughs> I can yeah. imagine. Yes, I can imagine that. Yes. So today, I'm actually going to be talking to a glass, uh, it's a glass up in the right. in order to commemorate the village, you know, you've got to commemorate yeah. her majesty, the me. Yeah. Um, rather than planting a tree, I'm having a, a, a glass round door design. Oh, so wow. Yeah. So it's a great two-listed building. So it's a hell of a responsibility just to keep the building yep. going. It's not, you know. Um, but I thought I'd have a, a round or designed uh, to stick on the window. With, right. Suddenly um, um, enough, there is a big pit. There are five gaps. So oh. there's uh, an apple tree because it's an apple growing village and state. Uh, there's a, a, a greyhound, which is the greyhound of the uh, Selborne family who owns Right. And the, the flag, our um, national flag, and the fact that the village hall was a school one, so I thought I'd have a mortar board on that. But everybody else, there's one, one gap missing, right. and they think they put through the panda in there. Oh. Put through the panda. <laughs> right. And I know I can't do that. Yes, you can, because this is the village. <laughs> exactly, you could. Yes. Yeah, I suppose I could, but I mean, it, it's not up to no, but it would be lovely. I think, I think it would make people laugh. It yeah, would it would be brilliant. It would be lovely. Um, yes, who knows? And, and you know, wouldn't it be lovely if we perhaps had a, an, an exhibition where we got to see all of the puppets? Are any of the... I should, I should imagine some of the puppets would be in museums now. Well, uh, funny you should say that. I've got a very lovely friend called Mr. Ferguson, the production manager of the Royal Ballet. Right. She Right. And there's a picture of Sue in the V and A wow. puppet on loan from the they've opened a branch of the V and A at Blackpool. Right. And um, there was Walker and Wise suit and Tommy Cooper's flowers, um, his trick and and a suit puppet and it suit that they were on loan from the V and A. Um, right. In Blackpool. So yeah, but that's quite funny. I was sent that yesterday morning. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So, we have been chatting uh, uh, a while now, which has been brilliant. Um, I'm going to come on to. Um, we've spoken a little bit about what you, what you, what you're doing at the moment, which is brilliant. You know, busy, busy, busy as ever, brilliantly. Um, and I'm going to ask you a question uh, now um, that I ask all of my guests, and this is often a little happy trip down memory lane for yourself, and also a little bit of knowledge. For me as well. Um, I'm going to ask you, as a little Brenda, what was a six, seven-year-old Brenda watching on the old telly box there? On the te well, it seems so long ago. Right. I don't think we. I don't think we had a television until I was six. So let me right. tell you. Right. Um, I loved Billy Bunter. Oh yes. It's now banned because it's all so politically incorrect. It's not true. Right. Um, right. I Cat Weasel. I loved um, Robin Hood. Right. Um, um, I loved Captain Pugwash. In fact, my uh. my phone, uh, my phone, uh, mobile phone, is Captain Pugwash. Okay. Um, and of course, the Magic Roundabout. We had. Of around. course, the Magic Roundabout. Yep. And Sooty, right. Has to be Sooty. But as a tiny, tiny little girl, right. we had, you were just reminding me now, picture book on Monday, and uh, on Tuesday, uh, flower pot men Wednesday, rag tag and bobtail Thursday, right. and the wooden chops on Friday. And my favourite out of all of that was rag tag and bobtail. Ah, uh, the good old watch with mother days. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Andy Pandy, Andy, my Pandy. brother. I have two elder, elder brothers. Right. Them. Oh, um, <laughs> little oh, weed. Ben, right. Yes. But perhaps it's because I have, they have to change my nothing. 
Uh, maybe because your <laughs> voice was quite high pitched. Yes, it would have been. Yes, yeah. Yes. Brilliant, just uh, just brilliant. So iconic, all of those programs, so simple, um, yeah. nothing fancy about them. And um, just back when children's television was 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 great and it's really I find it fascinating because you know you're going to get all generations say oh but my generation of children's television was was the best you know even I'm sitting here saying well you know Sooty and Co for me and the Sooty show that was that was the best you know but everybody's going to you know say that about their the generations but of course you know it's what they know and it's what they're they're brought up with and also the market has Change, you know, we've got a lot of animation out now. That's easier yeah. to distribute yeah. and dub. And you know, as you said before in our little pre-chat, thank God Sooty didn't really go down that road. Um, so yeah, yeah, thank God he is uh, he is still the lovable little puppet that we you know adore today. And long may presenter-led programming um, remain on television. Um, so, if you could envisage. Um, Maybe I'm gonna. Maybe I'm gonna say. You know, let's let's ask a bit of a different question then. If you could envisage a, a format that um, uh, for Sooty now, if you could see Sooty coming back in in years to come, um, how would you envisage him coming back to the TV? Oh, What's the good. direction you'd like him to go in? Oh, uh, um, I think I would love it if he could come back. Um, I think in, in, in a retail, in a retail um, shop again. Um, Poof, uh, the internet's gone it. wild. <laughs> Literally. Did Brenda say Sooty and Co's coming back? She did not, but she'd like it to. Oh, I would like it to. Yeah. And so yeah, would I, I, to I be frank. Something like that. Actually, I should probably, the moment I got the phone down, I'm silly girl, you should have said, you know, if I could give it to you thought. Um, I think so. I think the sitcom format is where Sooty sits best. Um, and that's the beauty of sitcom, because you can have an episode like that, and then you can have an episode that perhaps is a little bit more poignant, that maybe, you know, spoke about um, uh, children's mental well-being. You know, you can have the more gentle episodes and the more serious ones and the funny ones, but, you know, more so, Sooty was very good at the light and shade. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It felt yeah. like we were, as well as having a laugh, we were learning about serious things happening yeah. in the in the real world. Yeah. Well, and of course, I mean, I think a lot of the things with Matt were he did base a lot of his right. storylines and things on the real world. Yeah. Based on his kids' uh, uh, Joe and Ben. And right. He got two boys and a girl. Or yeah. Was yeah. School, yeah. You know, uh, Absolutely, and a lot of um, a lot of you know, um, because Matthew was the sort of big kid, but he was the adult. A lot of what he he went through was everyday life that perhaps children don't have to worry about, such as paying bills and. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. You know, that's Let them ask the relevant questions, yeah. Everything. Yeah. It, it, Absolutely. It, let them ask the questions and, and let, yeah. the, let the adults be engaged as well, because if they're engaged, then they're going to engage their kids. Yeah. When we end this podcast, I ask my guests a very important question. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the programmes that uh, you watched when you were little. We get your thinking caps on, Brenda. We're going to end the podcast on a television theme of your choice. So please tell me the theme tune you would like us to play out. Oh, oh, what from, I'm uh, sorry, what's your hot from city or from, from anything? From anything, from your childhood. From my childhood? Yes. Oh, well, of course we can. That will play out uh, when this podcast airs. We'll have the Captain Podwash theme tune, which is great. I've got that in my head now. Um, I'll be humming that all the way home. Thanks, Brenda. Uh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh,
brilliant, brilliant podcast, uh, Brenda. Absolutely amazing to talk to you. I've absolutely loved it. I have met, you know, we always say never meet your heroes, but never mind Sooty, you are one of my heroes. Um, you really are. I've loved every second of it. So, Brenda, thank you so much uh, for joining me on this podcast. It's, as I said, been incredible. Um, every every success with everything you're doing, and of course with Sooty and, and the theme park. Long may, you know, Sooty be a success. Long may Sue and Sweep be a success. Um, would you please do me the honour? Uh, you can either do Mo or Sue, but sign us out, Brenda Longman, uh, the voice of Sue. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks very much, Brenda. Thank you.